You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. You know who I am and today I'm really excited to show you something new. The Mavic 2 Pro and the new Mavic 2 Zoom. Two fantastic drones recently released by DJI today here in New York City. And we're excited to be here, but we also have a lot of questions that we want answers for. There's things that we want to know beyond the average cinematographer or photographer. I'm here with Michael Oldenburg from DJI. I have to say, sir, your presentation was awesome. I love it. But I'm curious, what are the top three things you like the most about the Mavic Pro 2 or the Mavic Pro 2 Zoom? Yeah, well, thank you first on the compliment. We worked really hard to put that presentation together. I think my favorite features about this product, the fact that you have the choice between two cameras. So the one inch sensor, total game changer for a drone on this size, right? Um, but I think the Zoom, and you, you can see that compression, that parallel, effect that you can create it's just gonna it's gonna open up a whole new kind of, of videography for uh, drone pilots which is great and then the other thing with the intelligent features with hyperlapse and dolly zoom I think that again you know just increasing the creativity that you can create with these products is going to be amazing and I think people are really also going to appreciate those side sensors and they're in active track mode and tripod mode right now which is a lot of people film that cinematic content in mm -hmm. tripod mode and just having that additional awareness about the environment your drone is in to help um, prevent also optical collisions I think it's going to be a really big deal. True I love the dolly zoom that's like the vertigo effect right the old yep. Alfred Hitchcock yeah. Uh, yeah. I was doing that with the Z3 back the Inspire one, but you yeah. couldn't record and live stream at totally. the same time with yeah. it. Yeah, and now you know it's it's the one tap for the pull out dolly zoom, but you can also manually create a, a fly in and zoom out. Like the shot you're showing behind you. Yeah. Awesome. Exactly. So how much is the new Mavic Pro 2 and how much is the zoom and when can we get it? Sure, so it's Mavic 2 Pro. Mavic 2 Pro. 1449. Mavic 2 Zoom is 1249. Available today on DJI.com and very soon through our authorized retail channels around the world. Awesome, thank you very much sir, You're I appreciate it. Yeah. Frankly, these new drones really open up a lot of doors, but they also don't have some of the features that we've always been wanting. And that's what's important to me, is to give you a comprehensive review of exactly what we're seeing. So we'll start with the Mavic 2 Pro. It's got that new one inch CMOS sensor shooting 4K UHD at only 30 frames per second. 4K 60 is still reserved for you Phantom pilots. Now, the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom can also fly a little bit faster. We go from 40 miles an hour to 44 miles an hour. Yes, there is a sport mode, but question of the day, do we see attitude mode in the Mavic 2 Pro? The answer, no. Now, it'll be interesting to see if a hack comes out for it that we could get attitude mode because that is just so critical in getting buttery smooth shots. Now, the other things that they added are almost 10 sensors for obstacle avoidance. So you can have obstacle avoidance on the sides, the back, and even above the drone as well. I have to say, with this new Hasselblad sensor, I'm really excited because the color depth is also much better than sometimes even what you get on a big Sony a7R Mark III. A Sony a7R Mark III has an 8-bit color gamut, and we're now seeing a 10-bit color gamut from the Mavic 2 Pro. But you will see more dynamic range with the Mavic 2 Pro than the Mavic 2 Zoom. You know what's really cool? Do you remember the old Inspire 1, the old Z3? You could do zoom and the vertigo shot. Well, now with new intelligent modes, we're gonna be able to do those classic Hitchcock shots with the new Mavic 2 Zoom. Now, when we did a recent poll online, we were asking people, you know, what are you more excited about, Mavic 2 Pro or Mavic 2 Zoom? Overwhelming majority at 83% said they're interested in a Mavic 2 Pro, right? One of the big questions with the Mavic 2 Pro and the Mavic 2 Zoom is, are we gonna be able to use it for photogrammetry? Now, I have Mr. Angad Singh here, who is the drone Gandhi of drone mapping. And he, <laughs> and he is frankly- I'm not the drone Gandhi of drone mapping. <laughs> Angad, I've got a question for you. All right, 
We just found out that with the Mavic 2 Pro, even though it does have a new larger one inch sensor, that it does not have a global shutter. It's got a linear rolling mm. shutter. Yeah, absolutely. So is the Mavic 2 Pro really viable or a good solution for photogrammetry? Yeah, absolutely. When it comes to Pix4D being, in my perspective, and what I truly believe is the premier solution for you know taking images and creating very high resolution 3D models and maps, even though it has a linear rolling shutter, that is not something that will stop you from using it whatsoever. I mean, the original drones, the original, you know, earlier Phantom series, the earlier Mavic series, which are very, very popular devices that folks are using to conduct very high level photogrammetric work and 3D modeling, they have linear rolling shutters. There's only two things that you need to do when you have a linear rolling shutter camera that you're using to create, you know, good data with in Pix4D. And that is make sure that you're not flying too fast. The faster that you fly with a camera that has a linear rolling shutter, the more distortion that will appear in that image content. Therefore, don't fly too fast. And then on top of that is use the linear rolling shutter correction algorithm within our software. Within the Pix4D software. Within Pix4D. Pix4D. So when you fly the drone, you're flying your drone out in the field. I mean, we're hardware agnostic. We work with any hardware. Yes, it's incredibly exciting to be at this DJI event. And yes, we all know that DJI makes fantastic products from my personal opinion, but just go ahead, use the linear rolling shutter correction algorithm in Pix4D, don't fly too fast, and you should be okay. So if I understand it correctly, there are a couple extra precautions that we have to take in, in our data acquisition when using a linear rolling shutter, like slowing down, yeah, making like, sure we have a good shutter speed. Well, I don't think that you should be flying very fast when we're trying to collect clear and crisp and in-focus images anyways, but especially with the linear rolling shutter, don't fly as fast as the drone can go at all when you're mapping. Yeah. I mean, fly relatively slowly. And if you want to be super, super careful, you can physically stop the drone at every location that you have to take a photograph. And, and in Pix40 Capture, that's our free flight planning app, that would be called Safe Mode. And I know that some of the other, other hardware apps and other flight planning apps that exist also have similar functions to compensate for the effects of that linear rolling shutter. Awesome, so let me ask you one question. So the global shutter is technically a little bit better for mapping. It's maybe sure. because yes. less- Yes, Abs okay, yes, yes, that's right. Now let me ask you this, what about like point cloud cleanup? When we're using something like a linear rolling shutter versus a global shutter, are there differences in like the time frame that it may take to conduct these mapping missions, clean up our point clouds and get our output deliverables? I that's a very hard question. I think there's so many variables that are involved with answering that, that I don't think so. I don't think that there should be too many things that we have to have to compensate for, etc. I mean, it just goes back to the two basic points that I started with. Use the correction algorithm within Pix4D. Don't fly too fast. So I have one more question for you. One of these things that I'm really excited about, the Mavic 2 Pro, yeah. is the fact that it's got this 10-bit color gamut. It's gonna have a lot more color and dynamic range in the images. Do you think that that could actually help out in any photogrammetry work? I think so. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's if you increase the dynamic range, sometimes you can bring out different colors and stuff. And that can help. I mean, I've seen folks that have made beautiful, just absolutely beautiful 3D models in Pix4D where they have taken those images and used some image processing software to bring out particular colors, to bring out highlights and put that into the software. You know, some basic imaging tools, that's not, you know, that's not something that that I know a tremendous amount about. I think that you as somebody that has you know done more photo editing, et cetera, would be able to advise folks on that. But at the end of the day, yes, I've seen beautiful results that come out when folks do a little bit of pre-processing on the images. Most of the time, you don't have to do that. Yeah. Most of the time, it's not a requirement. I mean, if you're ensuring that your, your camera settings and the sensor settings are going to be appropriate for in the field. I mean, having a faster um, shutter speed, right? You know, crisper image, it's, it's being captured a little bit quicker, making sure that your white balance is correct for the environmental conditions that you're experiencing at the given moment. And you, you should be okay. I, I when guess it comes to survey grade mapping and when it comes to creating really high resolution, geometrically accurate data, I don't think it's as important. But if you want to make a really pretty mesh, then maybe it is a bit more important. But one thing I will note on that is 
anything you do to the images should be a global change. It should be a batch process on the entirety of your image set, not individual image editing. I wouldn't do that because that can affect the photogrammetry. We just went so far down the rabbit hole. I love it. This is what I love talking about with you is that you want to cover each point. And I was just wondering, is it safe to assume that we may get better detail in the shadow areas? We may get more, you know, lifelike models with this type of data, especially with what you're seeing with the video style of acquisition. Yeah. I mean, one thing I will say, and I think that it's really important for everybody to know is photogrammetry, there's a lot of trade-offs. It's an art and a science. So it's hard to make absolute statements. You know, it's, it's hard to say that this will absolutely do this and this will help you, et cetera. I mean, it's hard to make those absolute statements. So it does take, you know, it takes experience. Practice mapping, have fun with mapping. Yeah. Um, okay, yeah. I got one more question for you. And by the way, I'm very happy that you brought up that, you know, mapping is not only an art, but it's also a science. But I'm trying to say also, it's probably not safe to assume anything until we actually get some mapping data with the drone itself and can see what it's oh, really yeah, possi I, possible. I'm actually, <laughs> yeah, this is like from a personal note, right? Most, every, when I talk, I'm talking about from my perspective. In my personal opinion, I would love to map with this drone, with the Mavic 2. It has a Hasselblad camera on it. I mean, they're a known sensor manufacturer. They do great work. I wanna see what it does. It has a linear rolling shutter though. Yeah. Although I was talking to the folks from Hasselblad and they were saying that it's a pretty quick shutter. Interesting. So hopefully, going back to those two things that I mentioned earlier, flying slower and using the linear rolling shutter correction algorithm, Awesome. Maybe we overcome the issues and then you have a pretty portable device. Okay, one last question. We now we also have the Mavic 2 zoom, right? We can get from 24 to 48 millimeters of zoom. Are we going to be able to map with that or are we going to yeah, have focal can... length change as we're flying? Is that well, something that's if possible? You, if you set the focal length to one set focal length and conduct your whole mission at that set focal length, you're fine. Awesome. Right? Actually, I mean, okay, so when you have an increased focal length, you decrease the footprint of the image, right? So as we, if we start out here with 24 uh, millimeter focal length, and then we increase it to 48, we're gonna go like this, right? Mm -hmm. That makes sense? Yeah. When you do that, let's say you're trying to map something really tall and skinny. Maybe that will help. Maybe we'll start to focus more on the object of interest that we have directly in front of us. Or do you think it's safe to say the, the proximity of the object yeah, of interest? Yeah, and also the proximity as well. I mean, just be careful. Don't change the focal length. Uh, don't zoom when you're mapping. And you can map with any camera. I mean, the awesome. software, Pix40 is such a beautiful software. It's, it's truly hardware agnostic. You can use any camera. I use my cell phone all the time. Awesome. Angad, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Yeah, I really appreciate this it. Was a great event. No, it's really awesome. And guys, if there's something that I, I want you to know, we're going to go fly this thing right now. We're going to have some fun with it and we're going to see how agile is it. We're going to see what is it like to use sport mode and so much. I do have to say though, I'm so excited about this drone. I'm going to go buy one right now. And if you want one, just click the link below. All right, let's go fly it. Many of our friends and followers have been asking a similar question. Does the Mavic 2 Pro replace the Phantom 4 Pro? I actually think the answer is pretty simple. Not really. And here's why. While DJI has been advertising the one inch sensor that the Hasselblad provides, it's an amazing 10 bit color depth for photos and videos. So the images are looking incredible. I actually edited a pano of New York and it looked absolutely incredible and the depth of color was truly amazing. And the amount of editing forgiveness that you had was truly incredible as well in the DNG files. In fact, Photoshop and Lightroom actually recognize the camera profile so it makes it even easier to edit anything. Some people were mentioning in my raw video that it looks like there may be some loss of focus issues on the left side of the video so that is another thing it's a lot easier to set uh, it seems like an infinite focus on the Phantom 4 Pro for whatever reason but after mapping with the Mavic 2 Pro I didn't really have the right conditions to get that data so far uh, you know without having the applications to run a mapping mission I tried it it was over water we were trying to map a barge and it's really, really difficult without GPS. I mean, the GPS information wasn't very good. Uh, in fact, the GPS was severely inhibited by all the steel from the building. And while I'm still processing the data, the Phantom 4 Pro's global shutter puts that bird ahead of the race 
against the Mavic 2 Pro. So if you're actually looking to map and film, the global shutter, sensor quality, and stability of the Phantom will still provide more value than a linear rolling shutter Mavic 2 Pro. But I also don't think that's gonna inhibit sales whatsoever because the Mavic 2 Pro is a phenomenal sensor for photos and videos. And with its portability and flexibility, more and more people are gonna take that drone further and further with OcuSync 2.0 and go to the most remote places in the world, creating content that we've never seen before or in a color depth that has never been available before. That 10-bit color depth, if you think about it, is even more than a Sony a7R Mark III, that 42 megapixel sensor is only 8-bit color depth. Think about that. So in short, Phantom 4 Pro over M2P if you need to map and diversify your deliverables to a client. Thanks again for listening to the show. Ladies and gentlemen, I really appreciate it. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be here. My name is Paul, and you're listening to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You.